everyone it's the weekend again and time for amazing amazon good day to you wherever you're watching us from this is captain television the legal studios of captain television and on today's episode of amazing amazon wait this is the program where we get to motivate everybody the young the old the adults the adolescents the aged the toddler everybody the females the males but we bring in strictly female guests oh no we are not trying to be gender biased but we are trying to inform everybody in the world that there are different females doing excellent work in different sectors of the economy this is today's episode you're welcome to today's episode of amazing amazon my name is omoto shola shari Makin. and on today's episode of amazing amazon we have a very interesting topic to talk about and we're talking with a, a, a lady a daughter of zion a virtuous woman i i don't want to start hyping her now but you really need to see who i'm talking about because she's worth the hype she goes by the name michelle toby adesson yeah she is a creative director alina creation she's a faith based fashion and lifestyle brand it's a business she's into a business that does shirt with this pyjama uh, um, who these joggers I mean with Christian inscriptions on it. This is a work in which males do and now we are finding a female doing the same work. We have a lot of questions to ask. Let's bring in our guest so we can ask her what motivated her, what she thought about, why did she decide to go into printing t-shirts, brand for people. This is something we find males doing but why a female? Well that's the purpose of amazing Amazon. Good day to you ma'am. Good day. Thank you very much for being a part of us. Thank you. So good to be here, sir. No, oh, thank you very much. So we'll go straight into um, your brand. Your brand says Light Christian Mesh Brand. We equip with merchandise to promote the gospel. We produce for individuals and organizations. We do worldwide delivery. We print um, joggers. We print t-shirts among different things. And I've gone through your bio. I have seen how excellent your work are. Why this? What did you study? What are you doing? Why did you think of doing it? Why not go into makeup like the female folks? Why not go into fashion designing? Why not go into cooking? Oh, Alina's chef, Alina's <laughs> cooking, Alina's spawn. Why this to be precise? Okay, so um, I studied English language. Okay. Yeah, so I studied English language and I, I've always loved fashion since I was young. Why I, not fashion design? <laughs> I actually tried fashion designing at some point, but I just felt it wasn't really meant for me. Mm. You know, there's a way that um, when, as a young girl, you love fashion, people yeah. think that automatically you should be a fashion designer. Yeah. So I actually tried to learn it, but I realized that that's not where, that, that's not the path I've been called to. So I remember when I was in 200 level in the university, you know, I was just having my personal time with God and you know praying and having Bible study and I was meditating that particular day and I remember that I started to see pictures of me using remember that I said that when I was young I had the dream of owning a fashion brand yeah. like a big fashion brand mm -hmm. so I saw that in in that um, I won't call it a vision or anything it was just a picture that I saw of yeah. me using my fashion brand to preach the gospel and yeah. I was in the, I was in 200 level as at that time so I drew it out because like I've never seen anything like that. Mm. So I saw a picture of myself doing t-shirts with inscriptions, you know, doing tracts for people yeah. when they come to buy from me, you know, they get, you know, something about the gospel. And then I just drew it out in a paper and I just let it go. So after school, NYC and everything, I was working and it started to come to me again that now you need to start this thing that you saw like and in years full time ago, in full time. Mm. So I was like, I'm not sure I want to do this because I was working and all of that. So I, I started it, but when I started, I was outsourcing. So I would pay printers to do it for me. Yeah. And then they would just not do it the to way my you taste. Really want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was what pushed me to go and learn printing myself. Like I want to because I'm somebody that loves excellence a lot yeah. and there's a way that when people are doing your thing, they don't do it the way you, you want, want it. it. Yeah. So I was like, okay, let me learn the ropes of this thing myself. And that was how I learned about it and started doing it. Hmm. You had the uh, encounter at 200 level. Yeah. It came again after school. Did anything keep striking your mind when you first had it in 200 level? When it came back after uni, did anything keep striking your mind? Like, oh, maybe you kept on seeing a particular print maybe which later led to being your first print. Did anything of such nature happen? Okay, so I remember that um, 
when I was in 200 level, as at that time, it wasn't a popular thing, but I remember that I saw someone wear a t-shirt that, that wrote, no Jesus, no peace, like K-N-O-W, mm, and then the beautiful. N-O was highlighted, like no Jesus, no peace. So that was one thing that struck my mind, like, okay, and I always believe in something that, um, things that people do, yeah. I see it as possibilities, right? Like when I see someone do something and it's something that I've always wanted to do, I see yeah. it as a possibility of what I am capable of doing. Mm -hmm. So I remember that that was the striking thing that I saw mm -hmm. that, you know, made me realize that, okay, this is something that I would do in future. Mm. Why did you decide to focus on faith-based only? Why didn't you try to, because considering um, the economic aspect, wouldn't you, didn't you at any point think of why faith based, why churches and, and fellowship centers alone? Why not just do it on a large scale or if you want to do anything that is not faith based, yes, I produce for you. And did you at any point expand to maybe making of pillows, making of um, um, cards or did you expand it or you focus basically on clothing and clothing and things? Okay, so for me, faith based, um, I decided to do faith based because it was more like an instruction. Although I have created a, um, shall I say, a, se a sector, yeah. another sector for to cater for people that want to have their maybe brand, their organizations. Yeah. You want printed T-shirts for your organizations, but I focus more on faith based because, to me, it's purpose. Like it's me doing my assignments and all of that. So concerning pillows, I've actually not delved into pillows yet. I just focus more on frames, t-shirts, um, joggers and all of those things because I love clothing more. So I felt, let me just niche down and focus on these things yeah. more. How has the experience been so far? Okay, mm, it's been it's been mixed feelings. Okay, it's please been... break it down to us. <laughs> we don't want to hear the sweet side. Yeah, exactly. We also want this, the bad it's side. Been, it's been sweet and it has been very challenging. Yeah. It's been fulfilling because I, I feel so happy. I feel, I don't know how to explain it, but I feel so alive doing this. Mm. I feel like I'm making God proud doing by doing it. what I'm doing in my business. You know, it's not just me doing something to make money. It's also yeah. me touching lives, impacting people. And every time I get messages from people telling me that, oh, your inscriptions blessed me, they inspired me, they spoke to me. It just makes me feel like, oh, I'm doing something Great. that counts. Yeah. And it's also been challenging because you know, everything that you do has, there are always challenges in them. Yeah. And this is not an exception. Mm -hmm. You know, um, sometimes cost of production, um, increase in um, increase in stuff, you know, in market prices and all of yeah. those things. Dispatch riders, issues, customer preferences, like it's a lot because some people tell you, oh, we produce inscriptions, right, in our, in our organization. We bring out words and some people tell you, I don't want any of those words. It's my own that I want. And sometimes you always have to like weigh them because sometimes some of the words that people want on their shirts might not align with the values that we have as a brand. So mm. it's a lot managing it because as much as it's for impact, it's also for profit because yeah. nobody wants to go into business and not make profit yeah, out of obviously. it. So it's like, it takes a lot to be able to manage the expectations and also um, keep putting out, keep staying on track mm. because I don't want to lose focus and then, you know, go out of track. So mm. that's the challenge for me. And but in all of it, I'm really excited to be doing this and I won't trade it for anything. What made your, your brand exceptional in the industry right now? There are different people doing it right now. This is Lagos. We have thousand and one people doing it. Yeah. We have thousand and people, thousand and one people that are in a way better than what you do. And you have thousand and one people that you are better than. But what makes your hub exceptional? What makes your work speak for you? I'm very sure your, your, your samples are displayed on the screen right now. But what made you exceptional? What do you feel like, oh, I carry glory, I carry fire, I don't stand alone. What is making my, I am a difference, I am a lady with the source. What is making you different from others? Okay, so number one, God, right? And I'm not trying to sound cliche. No, sure. Because my inspiration comes from him. I always tell people that, when I set out to do this business, yeah. one of the things I, I told myself is that my brand will stand out. Mm. It's not going to be, I'm not going to copy what other people are doing yeah. because there are a lot of people doing this thing, right? I'm not going to copy what somebody is doing. My, yeah. my inscriptions, my designs, everything yeah. is going to stand out. And so God is the source of my creativity. Mm. I'm a very creative person, right? I, I get ideas from the most random place. Yeah. And when those ideas come, I'm able to creatively 
you know, bring out those ideas and express it. So um, what makes my brand stand out is um, my creativity and also my excellence as a person in the way I relate to my customers, in the way I put out my work. You know, it makes me happy when people say, like today we went to church for a program and then somebody was wearing the shirt that I made and oh. my husband was like, are you not the one that made this shirt? Mm. And I smiled like, wow, somebody can see my work and say, and Michelle did this. Mm. Because if I was trying to copy every other person, I'll be lost in the crowd. Yeah. But because I stood out and said, oh, I'm going to do my own thing and create a niche for myself. Mm. It makes me stand out so much that when people go out, people come, go out and say, I went to this um, conference and I saw somebody wearing your work. And it makes me feel proud of myself. Like, wow, people can recognize my work out there. And mm, so that's basically it. me just standing out and choosing to not do what every other person is mm. doing, even though I'm doing what every other person is doing. Mm. Dear listeners, at home, you are still on to Amazing Amazon and we are still talking to the founder of Alina Creations. But now I want to ask something. We, we are, I'm a Christian. Well, not all my viewers are Christians, but we've heard of Jesus yesterday, Jesus today, and Jesus forevermore. But then the Jesus of yesterday was um, our Father who, but Jesus of today is more for fire, more for fire. <laughs> do you understand? So how do you stay in trend? How do you keep moving? You know, we are in the 21st century now. The Genesis are taking over. It's giving. You know, I, we now hear new signs. That it's giving takeover. It's giving <laughs> over. Yeah. Over. So how do you stay in trend? How do you stay afloat? How do you follow as okay now? People no longer wear white and black like with touch of purple mm -hmm. like they used to do. People now wear oh a, a cowboy hat, different this thing. How do you stay afloat? How do you make sure you're updated in your designs? Okay, so um, I like the fact that you, you're able to ask this question because one of the things I've learned or that I'm learning is to be able to understand the language of every generation. Great. Right? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, today and forever. Yeah. But the way that he's communicated and expressed from in the old generation is different from how you know he's been expressed now. So one thing I, I do is I understand the language of um, generation. every generation, right? I know that the way the Gen Zs, or that's what they call them, right? Yeah. The way the Gen Zs, you know, understand God is different from how they understood God in our, in time of our parents and all yeah. of that. So being able to stay in tune with um, the changes and the dynamics, I also understand firmly that God is still the same, irrespective yeah. of um, generations coming and going, God still remains the same. So one thing, first of all, is me being rooted and grounded in the knowledge of God because this job that I do has to, you know, it has to do with um, scriptures, understanding yeah. God. So mm -hmm. my faith has to be in check. Yeah. And that, that's one thing that cannot be moved. Mm -hmm. Also, I am able to, you know, I, I get to study things a lot. Mm. So I look, at, I look out for people. And I think one thing that God has helped me with is being able to communicate to people a yeah. lot so i'm able to understand what they want sometimes i even ask questions like oh what kind of designs would you like to see us do what kind of inscriptions would you like to um have us create yeah. so i i make sure that i communicate with my audience mm. because one thing i learned in this business is that you're not in business because of what you think is the perfect idea yeah, it correct. is about what your if your target audience don't like it they don't like it no, yeah. no matter how amazing your idea is they have to love it so i you know i'm always in tune communicating with them and then i also follow people that are you know top in the industry yeah. to see what they are doing i follow to see not to copy but to get inspired mm. okay so how are they doing it? how can i become better mm. now what is your own mission what is your brand's mission and vision our mission is to um, use fashion and lifestyle to communicate the gospel so we know that um Preaching the gospel is a thing, yeah. and people can preach the gospel in every way. You can yeah. preach the gospel through um, megaphone, through tracts, in the church, and all of that. But we're here as apostles in the marketplace, basically. So we are yeah. equipping people with merchandise yeah. to propagate the gospel. We are equipping people, enabling people to go out there and be bold about their faith. I, My desire is to see people being bold about their faith and being able to use creative means to preach the gospel in every way that you can just being creative about it and being standing out basically mm. can you talk about a recent successful project you carried you you, you carried out and you like you loved how you went you loved how 
probably it was stress-free probably you created it and maybe the customer's review was great can you tell us a recent successful project you embarked on okay so the most recent i've embarked on a lot but the most recent for me is the launching of my new line of product is um, an infusion of t-shirts and cara fabric adire fabric you know um, infusing them together it's, it's an infusion of um, african print and t-shirt material so i decided to do it because i you know i wanted to give people more you know room to create um to create more exceptional ways for people to um, propagate the gospel right i realized that um some people tell you oh i don't do t-shirts t-shirts is just people think that t-shirt is a casual thing yeah so t-shirt is just something you can wear in your house so i decided that i'm going to change that narrative and then yeah. i started to create um an infusion of ankara print mm. and t-shirts and you know i launched it when i was when i was working on this project to me i was just thinking okay i'm just going to just launch it but the more i i thought about it the more it's looked big in my heart and you know I, I, I started to create a team for myself i created a team of people i worked with this team and we were able to you know put our heads together and um bring out this product and the love the support was massive the, everybody like literally loved it because it was different like it's like the first of its kind in the christian merch industry and so so far i just launched it um in june and so far, the response has been really amazing, and I look forward to it, you know, even growing beyond me. And mm. so that's like the recent one that I've just mm. done. Yeah, that is a whole lot. Well, we we'll definitely talk about success without making mention of challenges, but we have to go on a short break right now. And when we return, we'll talk about more challenges. And we will not forget the main purpose of this interview, which is to motivate people, the young, the old, especially the female child. We'll go on a short break right now. Amazing Amazon still continues. Glad to add you back. You're still on to Amazing Amazon. This is the program where we get to motivate everybody in different sectors of the economy. And as usual, we bring to you female guests. And like I used to say, this is not we trying to be gender biased, but this is we trying to showcase to you that there are different females doing excellently in different sectors of the economy. And before we went to that short break, we were talking, she's starting with a woman to be proud of. She's a woman to be proud of, I mean to say. And now, before we went to that break, we talked about your latest success. And I said, when we return, we're talking about your challenges. Any recent challenge or any challenge that you can never, ever forget in the industry. Now, let me take me for an example now. Ever since my line in, in this broadcast industry, I've had a challenge in which wake me up in the middle of the night i will say to you date time how it happened how i felt for strict how i felt oh this is the last bus stop i'm giving up mm. so any challenge that you can never forget or any challenge that happened recently to you in your line of business okay so there are several so i would um okay i've said that let me just mention the generic ones that happens to most everyone but the ones that i know that are peculiar to me right now is the current um, increase in everything mm -hmm. in terms of it's affecting so, everybody, you know, I do right? t-shirts, right? And there's this mindset that people have, which I'm always trying to change, you know, um, by communicating it to them. There's this mindset people have, like, it's just t-shirts, so why does it have to be so high? Mm -hmm. I can just buy it. Some people can even tell you, it's not, can I, can't I pay just 2,000 naira? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's t-shirts and all of but that. But can I buy my shirt? Can I buy, and, design. you know, they tell you that, I want quality, it must be quality and all of those things, which is good, right? So it yeah. is managing customers' expectation where you have to give them quality at the most affordable price, yeah. right? And that's like a big challenge because every time, because most of these shirts that I use are imported. So the increase, um, the dollar, shipping fee. shipping fee and all of those things gets to affect the prices of these shirts. So how, how I was able to cope that challenge was to now start producing certain things myself yeah like um I, I i do printing myself now that helped me to reduce the cost of production i mean to the barest minimum and also helped to reduce unnecessary mistake because like i said i was outsourcing at some point and it was really like it was i remember there was a particular time where i 
you know, outsourced my um, t-shirt production to some guys and they just did it anyhow. Mm -hmm. And then the clients were so angry. And this was somebody that came as a referral. And I oh. felt so bad. I had to like redo another one with my money. So there are many times like that that I've had to like, because I believe so much that a good name is better than silver or gold. Yeah. So I'm always like, you know what, it doesn't matter beyond me wanting to make profit and all of that, I'm just going to redo it for you. So I just came to a point where I realized that, see, if I continue like this, these people will just make me just keep, you know, making losses in this business. So how I was able to contain that was to, you know, go into production myself. And so far it's been good and it's been better. Also um, for delivery, delivery system in Nigeria can be very frustrating Logistic, sometimes. Right? Logistics system mm -hmm. can be so frustrating. So. I, I've been able to have like a company that I work with that specifically work with for my business and so they handle all of my logistics so it helps take away the headache to a large extent because yeah. these people are reliable to, to a large extent and it has really helped a lot so mm. that's like one out, out of the many challenges that I've faced. Now let's talk about how you push yourself to the people out there. If you are in the comfort of your house, even if you're going to the office, or even if you're working from home, how do you reach out to a normal Nigerian? How do you, what ads, how do you do your ads? Do you use social media more? Do you do radio and television jingles? Or what do you do to, to reach out to a larger audience? So I, for now, I, I do more of social media ads, like pushing them out on social media. Yeah. But in recent times, I've decided, I've also decided to take my, um, promotion out of social media and you know reach out to people around me so one thing i always do is i wear what i'm um whatever i'm going to most times i wear my work and it's a way of me promoting it so most yeah. times when i wear it and people look at it and they're like oh i love what you're wearing who made it who made it for you i'm mm. like i made it they're like wow can you make this for me mm. and then also referrals too i get my um i get business from referrals a lot one thing that has really helped me is because I am very intentional about the quality of work that I put out, it helps to, you know, speak for me. And when I put out those work, you know, people see it and they like it and then they come back for more and then they yeah. refer their friends. I also reach out to people. I remember reaching out to a few um, people on my social media. Um, so beyond just posting on my page, because Instagram is, there's a lot of distraction online, right? Yeah. So beyond just posting on my page, I reach out to people like, pitching to them, oh, this is what I do, um, can I um, do this for you? Sometimes you get a no from people, sometimes mm -hmm. you get a yes. So that's basically, it. I use social media and then out of social media, I get to wear what I do more and then tell people about what I do. Mm. Now let's talk a little bit about Christine though. You attend a church, how do you stay or stand as a role model to the younger generations? Okay. How do I stand as a role model to the younger generation? No, aside your brand now. Okay, personally. Okay, yeah, personally. Okay, okay. So, um, one thing I always tell myself is that I want my life to be an example of what I preach. So I'm very intentional about not just preaching and saying that this is the way, yeah. but also letting my life be the light. Yeah. And so I evaluate myself a lot, a whole lot of times, and I ask myself, Michelle, this thing that you are doing, does it glorify God? Does it shine the light of God? Does it represent you as a model? Because so, I know that there are a lot of young people that look up to me. And so I'm very, very critical with myself. I am also very intentional about my life, like mm. everything that I do. And I'm intentional about being an excellent person because, you know, there's this mindset people have about Christians that because um, you're a Christian, you can just do things anyhow. Christians are this, Christians are that. And that is a very wrong um, mindset that people have that they shouldn't have. So one thing I'm very intentional about is communicating that as a believer you can be excellent, as a believer you can be exceptional, no matter whatever industry you find yourself in, even if it is not within the four walls of the church, you can still stand for Christ. So um, that's one thing that I'm very intentional about. Yeah, with the current wave of things right now, with the way children are fast growing, physical attributes, how they learn from films and the, how they learn from social media. What advice do you have to a mother? What advice do you have to children as a whole to help shape in their life to become responsible citizens of the country? Okay, so first for parents, my advice would be that 
if you are going to reach, raise children in this century, you need to hold God tight, mm. like hold him to your chest. <laughs> because um, the way we were raised, it's not the same way that these ones are being raised. They are more exposed now. Yeah. There are a lot of exposure. And it's not about shouting and saying, oh, don't do this, don't do that. It's about letting God show you how to train each child. For example, my mom gave us five of us, right? And every one of us have different personality types. Yeah. I'm different from my brother, you know, and the way our life is, is going is different from how each other is. So. You need to understand, you need to partner with God as a parent to understand the dynamics of your own child, the uniqueness of your child. Let him give you a blueprint for how to raise your child so that that blueprint, you use it in training them and teaching them and guiding them in the way that they should go. And then for children, I always tell young people that you're not too young to know God. You're not too young to start walking with God. I, I remember that I started becoming very conscious of God at the age of 13. Mm. Like I started bec very becoming very serious with God, you know, and mommy will always tell me stuff about how that be serious with God in your yeah. life. The best time is now and all of that. So I tell mm -hmm. young people that you're not too young to, to know God for yourself, mm -hmm. you know, get a mentor, get um, books that will shape you. Don't, there are a lot of distractions, but everything falls, falls and rises on decision making because everybody is a product of their decision yeah. and their choices. So. You, you can decide that I want to make a difference for myself. Yeah. I want to know God more. I want to serve God more. And when God sees that openness in you, definitely God desires to, you know, work and partner with us on the earth. So mm. this is not we trying to turn the old thing into a someone, but this is the main purpose of the program. Now, what helped your Christian life as a child? Because obviously this is a way to try to motivate a child right there. You know, there are kids that want to work for God, but because of peer pressure, what their friends will tell them, what their classmates will tell them, or what's happening in their area, they are unable to do what they really want to do. What helped your Christian love as a child that started from 13 years of age? Um, so what helped me was, I, I've always had this picture. So my mom used to tell me that, um, when I was born, she used to tell me that there were prophecies about my life that I was meant to serve God with my life. That, that, was, that was like literally what they told her about mm. me. And so she would always hammer it because as a young girl too, you know, peer pressure and all of those things, emotions, you want to date, which are things that I also found myself in. But we would always hammer it like, see you, they've already said it that you are meant to serve God mm. with your life. So that was a subtle consciousness that was planted in my heart that I did not know. But I, everywhere I found myself in, I realized that, for example, if I go to a new church now, they just see me and then they just pick on me like, oh, you, go and join the choir. Mm. And I'm like, why are you asking me to join the choir? So mm. it was there's, just like... There's these lies that radiate. Just, exactly, mm. even as a young girl. So they just throw me in the choir. And so I remember as far back as when I was young, I found myself, you know, working for God. But I was just doing it as per religion. Like, okay, they are supposed to be in just the choir for the and all of that. But <laughs> as I, I think I became very, 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 very intentional yeah. when I go into the university. Like when it started becoming a personal thing. Because mm -hmm. I realized that if you really want to enjoy the best of God, yeah. you have to have a personal relationship with mm -hmm. him beyond what you were taught to do as a child. So those consciousness, you know, planted in my heart by my mom, I would say there were seeds that, you know, helped to bring up what I am today. Mm. Okay, now let's go back to your brand. Do you when you when you when you work, you know it's in different stages like in the media houses there's pre-production stage, there's production stage, there's post-production stage before you now end up saying it on the TV we or see or hear it from radio stations. What are those stages involved in your production, in producing of your designs, in making those of um, printing and then sending them out? What are those stages involved? Okay. Now so, let's link it to what advice would you have? Uh, okay, let me put it like this. What do you wish you knew earlier while starting your brand that you found that you just knew now? Like what's those life thing you wish you knew earlier? I don't know if you understand me. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. So for the first question, my um product my production stage. Um so I start first by conceptualizing the ideas because you know, um, I work with words. My business basically works with words, you know, using of, um, words and putting them on t-shirts. So sometimes um, when the words come, first thing I do is I write it down. I have a, an app on my phone, a Keep Notes app. 
So there I document every idea that comes to me, design idea, inscription ideas, that is where I dump all of those things. And um, so I also design, I, most of these designs, in fact all of them, I designed them myself. I put them out there in a mock-up and then post it, okay, people say, oh I love this inscription, I want to buy this, and then when they buy it or when they pay for it, then we go into the production process proper, which has to do with the printing, the heat transfer and all of those. It's a very long process, but it basically has to do with writing, conceptualizing, writing, designing, and printing. So um, for the co second question is what I wish I knew earlier. What I wish I knew earlier was um, that, there's so many things I wish I knew earlier, but one of the things I wish I knew earlier was that don't um, compromise on your standard because of anybody, right? One thing I used to think was that maybe if I make my prices cheaper, people will buy from me. Maybe if I do what um, this person is asking me to do, people will buy from me. From me. So one of the things that I, I, that I wish I knew earlier was that it's not about whether you are trying to make it cheaper or you're trying to make it in a certain way. Just keep putting out good work, keep yeah. doing quality work, excellent work, and your work will speak for you. Mm. And now I am, I've become more confident. Before I used to, you know, be very unsure of myself. Especially when I started, I was very unsure of myself, unsure of what I was doing, like, is it good enough? Mm -hmm. And because I wasn't sure, you know, when you're not confident enough in yourself, it makes you to just take anything that is thrown at you. Yeah. So people just tell you, oh, this is what I want, this is yeah. what you must do. And then you accept it because you feel like if you don't do it, you're not going to get another opportunity. Yeah. But now that I know better, I know that once you, once you, number one, know what you do, know what you stand for, yeah. and be very confident in what you do. Yeah. Be confident in the quality of work that you put out there. Mm -hmm. So now I'm so confident in my work and mm -hmm. I can put a price to it because I know the quality of what I'm giving to you. I know that... The people that know the value of what I'm doing understand the value of it and it has helped me to build more confidence, confidence in myself. Mm. We understand the fact that Christianity is split into different denominations. We have the white garment churches, we have the Pentecostal churches among others. And now since your brand is faith-based, how do you ensure that your brand designs are inclusive and welcoming to people of all faiths and backgrounds? If whatever uh, your print, how do you make sure they are widely accepted by all denominations? Fine, we are all Christians, yeah. we all called on God, but definitely there are some beliefs that work in some denominations that don't obviously work in other denominations. So how do you ensure your, your prints are welcoming to all, to all denominations, I mean? Okay, so um, me, I for my business, I my um, inscriptions are focused on the gospel. Yeah. And irrespective of... Your denomination is still the same gospel for example one of the inscriptions on my shirt says jesus is the way everybody whether you're in white garment or you are in um whatever church it is we all believe that jesus christ is the way you know so the word of god is the same irrespective of denomination mm. or beliefs and all of that it's still the same word of god like it's still the same so um that has really not been a challenge because as long as you believe in the bible every of my inscriptions are their scriptural backing for every single inscription that you see there there is you know um, a scripture to back it up so we work with scriptures it's not just words because for the fun of it right it is scriptures that we use and it is um personal and also generic to everyone as believers mm. looking at the future what exciting development do you think you you we end up bringing on Hmm, I'm not sure I want to share that because mm. there are some things I have in mind that I okay. want to do. Mm -hmm. but maybe in future. Okay. Maybe we should not take where a long time goes. <laughs> yeah, but I, I want to, one thing I really want to do is really go into fashion full time. There are some ideas that I have in my head on how we're going to use fashion to preach the gospel. People have always thought that fashion is all about, you know, just looking nice and all of that. But one of the goals that I have is to show people that you can use fashion as a way to preach the gospel. Beyond t-shirts now, the, the goals that I have is beyond t-shirt, but we're starting from you know t-shirts and we keep growing the brand. But the goal that I have is beyond t-shirts. People can see how they make they, their apparels can preach the gospel and you know promote the word of God. Beyond inscriptions, also with your lifestyle, because um, 
I've always believed that um, you can look good and also represent God. You can look good and shine the light of Christ through your modesty, through how you are able to represent God, you know, in this generation. So that's one of the major things that we are going to be doing through this brand to promote, to promote the gospel and to make people know that fashion is a very good way to preach the gospel of Christ. Mm. Okay, now let's talk about advice to younger generations that want to venture into a particular stream of business. I'm very sure there are one or two persons, probably on social media, probably in person, that have met to the oh, Auntie Michelle, please, I want to learn. How do you take in interns? How do you take in um, students now? Or uh, how do you, how would you advise anyone that wants or that intend to take through your line of business? Okay, so I've gotten a couple of messages from people um, about this. And one of the things I've realized that a lot of people that want to do this business, um, they don't know where to start from. And what, one thing I always say is just start from somewhere. So when I tell people that I started first by outsourcing even though i know that it was challenging because of my kind of person i i want to be able to you know define every process that i'm yeah. doing that's why i decided to learn about it but i tell people you can start first by outsourcing so there are places where i mean if you go to a co-market you go to yaba or even around you you will find printing shops that you can yeah. work with so if you don't want to outsource like just give them because some people might say, I don't have my machine and I want to do this business and all of that. I'm like, okay, you don't need, you don't need to have your machine. You don't need to have everything figured out. What you need to do is to know the basics. Mm -hmm. Know the basics of this business you're going, even anything you want to even go into at all. Know the basics of it, right? So do you know how to design? And then, you know, learn, learn everything, the basics of running a business. Yeah. And then if you don't want to outsource totally, there are places you can go to where they allow you to stay through the process so you are able to watch them you know do because you want to watch the quality of your production right so you're able to watch what they are doing and then follow up with them and you know be into it so it's really not difficult to be honest if it's something that you really want to do as a young person mm -hmm. just understand the basics of what you're doing and then first start by outsourcing you don't have to wait till you have the money to buy all the machines um, for printing before you start start with what you can mm -hmm. and then tell your friends when i started what i did was i you know i partnered with um, some of the guys that do printing around me and then i told them i i, I, I did my designs myself sent it to them mm -hmm. you know they print them out for me and then i gave some of the work that i did to friends mentors please just wear these clothes take a picture tell me your review your feedback of it that was how I started the business like okay tell me your feedback of it and then I got the feedback and then I posted oh this is the feedback from this person about what I did and then you know people want to see that you are actually you actually know what you're doing and people yeah. you know love what you're doing as well so you have friends around you mm. make shirts for them free of charge tell them to wear it and snap it and tag you on social media you know just leverage on the resources that you have around mm. you maximize it don't don't think, one of the things that I tell young people, don't think, oh, I don't have it all figured out. I don't know, I don't have what it takes. You don't, nobody ever has it all figured out. Yeah. Even the best of people. Mm -hmm. But one thing that people do, exceptional people do, is that they start from where they are and they grow. Mm. They keep growing and keep building. Mm. This is where we wrap up the interview for today. But before we wrap up, let's do a quick game, this or that. Okay. I hope you know what this or that means. It's like a 10, 15 seconds, 30 seconds game. This or that. I'll say, okay, this or that. You pick one as fast as you can. Okay. As fast as you can. Do we do an example okay. so you understand? Okay, okay this or that. Um, braid or weave on? Weave on, man. You're asking sharply. <laughs> You're not asking me. Oh, oh, weave on. No, no, I don't want weave on. Okay, okay. so you're asking as fast as possible. Okay. okay. Now, haircut or, or, or hair? Hair. Trousers or gown? Trousers. Bible or jotting? Bible. Presses or meditation? Meditation. Long gowns or short gowns? Uh, long gowns. Ketchup on top or ketchup at the side? Ketchup on top. Barbecue or shawarma? Barbecue. Mm, you're slow. <laughs> Let's try again. Okay. Just listen to that again. Bible stories or online stories? Online stories. Reading or meditating? Uh, reading. Gisting or watching movies? Gisting. Depends on just try. <laughs> <laughs> Mo uh, movies or popcorn? Movies. Netflix and chill or just staying indoor? Netflix and chill. Full-time work or housework? 
full time work. Chores or playing? Play. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, when it comes to um, your brand, working from home or working outside? Working outside now. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, because I want to expand. Mm. So I know that there's... Outside is stressful, you know. I know it <laughs> is, but you know that you cannot work from home all your life, right? Yeah, so, I know, especially right? for the nature of my work. So. Mm. Your word of advice, parting word of advice to everybody, anyone at all. It's not a must, it's business related. Your word of advice. Your parting short. Okay, so I'm just going to say this to everyone that um, there is time and season for everything, mm-hmm. and there's also a process. So yesterday I was on Instagram, and then I saw a video of Moses Bliss, and you know it was showing how he started from his secondary school to how he was going to studios. Like I was like, is it the same Moses Bliss, mm-hmm. Miracle No Data Jesus guy? Like mm-hmm. it was so inspiring to me. Like and it reminded me that everybody has a process. And there's times and seasons for everyone. Mm-hmm. So for everybody, because I know we all have dreams and um, expectations of how, where we want our lives to be. One thing that I've come to learn is that there's times and there's seasons and there's a process to follow. Mm. So don't give up. Keep holding on to God and keep trusting your process. Thank you. Well, she has said what I used to say on the program. This is me telling you once again to never give up. Be committed, be consistent and make sure you are not fun doing nothing. The celebrities we see today, they've started from somewhere. They don't just wake up one day and appear on the spotlight. Don't give up, be committed, and most importantly, be consistent. wrap up today's episode of amazing amazon to continue with the rest of the program but my name still remains omoto shola shari market saying god bless nigeria